Hey there, once again, Joe Darlington from Being James Bond, ready to talk about the uh, next Bond movie. In the... Where the hell have you been? Enjoying death. <laughs> Enjoying a Heineken <laughs> double O because we're wor working, I that's guess. That's right, yeah. Cheers, uh, brother. Cheers. Now, that's a little more like it. That's a little more oh. uh, for the weather, I think. I First of all, the last video we did, uh, it was, I don't know, in the 90s outside, and we were <laughs> in my basement like we are now, mm. but I was in Bond's ski coat. Yeah. Yeah. No bueno in the summer. <laughs> this is this is so yeah. much better. This breeze, I'm happy with this. Very this nice. is good. And a nice ice cold Heineken. Absolutely. All, all. Absolutely. And it's non alcoholic. Aren't we being good today? Mm, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Uh but maybe after this is a treat. All right, Joe. Mm -hmm. We're we're according to this, we're oh my goodness. We're we're back to Skyfall two thousand and twelve, which by the way. Even though this is our last version of this video series, 2012 mm. seems ages ago. Doesn't it, though? Yeah, it sure does. Boy, Eight that, years? Good Lord. That's, I mean, we're it's literally 2012. Yeah. By the time the next film comes out, it could be uh, the 10-year anniversary of, of Skyfall. <laughs> Strike that. Strike that. All right, so <laughs> we've got to talk about uh, the premise just to set this up. Mm. Although if you've seen the rest of the videos, you probably have it by now. But Joe and I, we yeah. always chat about these things in the wee hours of the night. And one of the things we said was, first Bond movies are the Bond actors. Are they the best? Somewhat. Uh, the last ones, are they the worst? Yeah, pretty much. But what about those weird third ones? Mm. Is this when the, the actor hits his stride? Is this yeah. when they finally figure out the mix between the cadence of the film and all the different tropes that we love? Mm. And we've been exploring them, and so far, we kind of are batting a thousand. I th Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah. Right? We've got Goldfinger. We gave that a thumbs up on the mm. theory. We gave Spyro Love Me a thumbs up. And, and, of course, we gave The World Is Not Enough a thumbs up. It sure did. But now we need to put Skyfall through the filter. Yeah. What what'd you think of Skyfall fall overall? Because I've heard mixed reviews from you. Some days you like it a lot, and mm. some days you you take issue with it. Well, I, yeah, and and I do take issues with parts of it. And and again, it's like a lot of them where I think there are some elements that are absolutely spectacular. Uh, I mean, and I'm not saying that to be kind. I mean, I think Skyfall just just like grand slam in certain aspects. Uh, other aspects, I find it to be very derivative of other franchises. Um, I find that the villain's plot, again, does not hold up to scrutiny whatsoever. Right. Um, so you, you do sort of have to turn the blind eye to certain things. But I but if you appreciate it for what it is, I, I, I do think it's a great... I mean, it's a great watch. And by the way, you and I saw this on the big screen not that long ago. It was our last international outing. Yeah. to Toronto. Yep. Yeah. It was great. It, it was. We saw it with yeah. the live orchestra, and it was pretty tremendous. And 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 yeah, I mean, that was probably the first time. Well, it was, I mean, it was the first time I saw it on the big screen since since I had seen it on the big screen. Right. If that makes any sense. But it was. But it, it really did sort of come back to me. Wow, this is a great movie. This is a great visually stunning film. It feels like a big Bond movie, mm. and and to me, it has. It, it took some of the best aspects of the Daniel Craig era, yeah. and it mashed them together. We kind of have a sullen, serious Bond. He can be very badass in areas. Mm. Yep. Uh, he's got some playful moments. It, it's got it's got all of it there. But you know, Daniel Craig's Bond in that film, I really liked. It was one of the things I really like about this outfit because even when you know after he shot off the bridge and. You know, he's, he's laying on the bed drinking a Heineken and he gets pulled back because of the situation at MI6. It's a mix of the the duty to queen and country, but you also see this really hurt dog. Mm. You know, this dog that was mm. shot in the leg that goes limping away, limping away yeah. but yet he's compelled to come back. And that that's what mm. the Craig Bond feels like. Yeah, It's like he's yeah. badass and he has such disdain yeah. for some of the, the order of things and yet he's pulled back by it. Mm. Yeah. No, that's that's a great. I, I love that observation, and I, I agree with it wholeheartedly. I I will say this: as much as there are some areas where I'm criticizing the plot for being a little too, I mean, coincidental sometimes, and certain things just sort of work out a little too conveniently. There are other times when I'm saying, "Wow, this is a smartly written film." Uh, the, the scene where I mean, Silva has been captured. M is kind of giving him a little dressing down. 
And, you know, of course, Silva does another one of his great monologues, which we'll talk about, which is spectacular. But I love how when he's basically chewing out M for having left him out there, etc., Bond turns and looks at M. Oh, you yeah. know, yeah. kind of gives him this like, hmm, yeah, I'm not really sure who I believe anymore. Right, kind of right, look. right. And I thought that was great. And then afterwards, as they're walking away, she stops and turns to Bond and says, "His name was Tiago Rodriguez, etc." Yeah. And he tells she, she's it, feeling the heat and the guilt yes. of that moment. Yes, and they address that in filmmaking, which I think is so smart. Yes. And they didn't have to. It's a Bond film. Yes. But they, they, they Mendez took his time and really connected the dots. Mm. I did love that. I also thought that Craig, as Bond here, really acted well. Yeah. Like, he had mm. ups, he had downs. Even something as throwaway as the lines with Money Penny when he comes back to MI6 and they see each other for the first time mm. after he had been shot by her. Yes. The little jump back and forth, he's so calm. If you watch him... He hardly moves his head. He mm. just keeps us in chill. It's like, well, you know, I really I don't think I could survive your very best. Mm. It's like those little things, as opposed to Inspector, when he goes, well, that's the type of thing that doesn't look good on the form. He's trying yes. to do the same thing, yeah. but it's not successful. No. Yeah, no, it, it's and it's odd how both of these films were done by the same director, and yet somehow we get very different results, even for things like that that you think he would have done in a very similar way. No, I, I, it's great because you you feel like you're watching intelligent characters. You're, you you can, you know, they, they can they, they can convey things without having to tell you. Like this, this is not one of those films that I mean. Sometimes you can tell that the writers are trying to direct the film yes. as they're writing it. Uh, let the director direct it, and and let him get his characters to convey uh, certain emotions. And and I mean, this happens here. You know, it does. And and I think it's why. This is one of those few Bond films that I think it works so well here, where the Bond girl is M. You could argue that yeah. M yeah. is the Bond girl yes. in this film. And because of that, I buy... I, I mean, I bought the relationship all throughout the series, of course. Mm. But I really buy that they're getting much closer. Even the, the little playfulness when he gets the DB5. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that whole back and forth. There's yeah. so much love and adoration there yeah. that... It's meaningful when mm. something bad happens. Yes, no, that's very that is very true. I, I will say that I, I kind of have had sort of a love hate relationship with with the ever increasing presence of M in the films. Ah, uh, you know, constantly in the field and et cetera, et cetera. Like, like it, like it, it, it literally, it, it was to the point where her in Skyfall, it was probably the natural progression of of where this character had been going. Like we we've gotten, she's become so ingrained in this story yeah. that it's essentially become a James Bond slash M movie. I feel like yeah. M gets as much screen time as James Bond and just having her be the Bond girl at the end, it, again, it was just the natural progression of things. So you must have loved the ending when she got killed. Um, like, and more actually, in the field. I was, yeah, well, that, that's what you get when you're out in the field all the time. I mean, this, this is why you're you don't go out it. in the field. <laughs> you're gonna get it. Um, yeah, so kind of mixed feelings at the end. I wasn't, right. I don't know if I was crazy about the way they ended her character that way um in fact i've i've always i've kind of remarked before that 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 scene in the church kind of feels to me like a reshoot like it it oh. kind of almost like sort of becomes a different movie for a second there and it, oh. it feels like a kind of um kind of a small ending like it's it's yeah. could, could have been a little more grandiose and i kind of wonder maybe they were debating because it's odd when you watch the film i've always you know i felt the whole time that the, that what they were going to do was have M run off with Kincaid at the end. Hmm. I was convinced that was where this was headed because I remember when I first yeah. saw it, and I promise not to go on too much of a tangent, but I remember, what? you know, trying to avoid spoilers the best I could. Spoiler alert: M's going to get killed, and I was like, huh. And I and I but I, but it was kind of like where I wasn't sure if I heard correctly or I wasn't sure if they were right. Right. So when you know that that brilliant scene when Silva comes to the hearing and he's right up and she's reading poetry and I'm like oh that's it she's that's it she's she's gone she's a goner. Um, when she didn't die there, I kind of was like oh, okay I guess they didn't kill her off. So I was sort of you know good for you movie you put one over on me and I you know fell for it. Um, so by the time they got to the end, I thought for sure it wasn't going to happen and she had already mentioned that her husband had passed away. All of a sudden, here's this guy, Kincaid, who's very kind to her, keeps calling her Emma. Um, hmm. And I thought for sure that we were going to fake Em's death. She was going to go off and live with Kincaid somewhere happily ever after. So when she finally actually dies, I kind of was like, huh, 
And I kind of, still to this day, kind of feel like, was that the right move for that character? So I'll take it one step further. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't mind her death, but what I found interesting is Daniel Craig, as James Bond in all of his movies, loses almost every mission in battle, including mm. the biggest one, which is to not have M die. <laughs> Like, she dies. Right. You went to all this trouble. Yeah. You know, you went through your old, you know, and I get why they did it. And first of all, mm. the Skyfall set piece, the action there. I will say this, where I've been kind of curmudgeon about the end of some of the other Bond films, mm. this one was fantastic. I really do like, you know, some people called it Home Alone with Bond. I was happy with it. Um, I was very content with it. I thought it was well resolved. I even liked the part, although it was wasted, which is terrible mm. i even like the part with bond at the end with m the new m yes and yeah. and because that was like all right now we're gonna have missions and of course they just toss that away but that's another story <sighs> yeah i uh, i have to ask you about <laughs> and i'm almost hesitating because we did a, a video not too long ago about this the bad guy what'd you mm. think of silva i i think Gosh. yeah yeah basically yeah <laughs> um Probably easily uh, one of the greatest villains, if not the greatest villain, frankly, and I and I yeah. have to hand it to. I was a tiny bit skeptical hmm. when they brought in Javier Bardem. Yeah. Because, I mean, again, he plays a great villain. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss. But I certainly don't want to see him just replaying villains I've seen in other films. Right. Um, plus, when they made him blonde, I was having flashbacks of Max Zorin. I, oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. you know, so I was I was a little a tad skeptical, but wow, holy smokes! I mean, I, what's there to say? I mean, I can I can sit there and watch that rat speech over and over. It never over. gets old, ever, never gets ever, old. ever. And it, my gosh, the entry point of this bad guy comes like forty five minutes into the film. Mm. I mean, it comes pretty far into the film. Yeah, yeah. Which is absolutely amazing. And so yeah. you are you're so much as opposed to. I keep doing this. I guess, as opposed to Blofeld Inspector, where yeah, it's like yeah. this little fizzle, you know, it's like right, 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 when yes. he's finally introduced. But this <laughs> is such an amazing introduction. And I again, it's one of these things where the director, the actor, the writers, they took their time. They yeah. said, you know what, let's not unfold this too quick. Mm. Let's everybody savor this. And it's that walking scene. Yeah. And it says so much. It's not just a story. It's basically describing their relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yes, oh. it, it really is, and you're absolutely correct. I mean, it does. I mean, you know, again, even just in these these reviews we've been doing, uh, I, I kind of have had a back and forth about. You know, sometimes movies can get dull and slow. Sometimes they can go to the other extreme where there's just a mile a minute and, and you can't take it take time to breathe. I think they nailed it here where they said, let's take a second and savor this moment because, boy, does it work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they, I mean, one of my other favorite scenes is the, in the Shanghai. I mean, the photography in the Shanghai scenes are spectacular. Yes. Um, just Agreed. gorgeous to look at. But this, the, the scene where, um, uh, oh, boy, his name just went out of my head. The assassin takes out the guy across Patrice. the street. Patrice, thank Patrice, you. Patrice, yeah. And then oh. as soon as he does that, all of a sudden there's Bond and there's this fight, this silhouette fight that, oh my God, is that terrific. It's and I remember I remember just kind of just, just drooling over that scene saying, boy, that's great. And again, talk about, it's interesting. Again, it's, it's how, do, how do I say this? As, as I talk about things going too slow versus too quickly, right. It's a fast fight, but it's all one shot, yeah. and it's mesmerizing. It so is. they, boy, I mean, I tell you, he, this is really where uh, Sam Mendes is, is just gifted. He brought it all. Yeah. He, he, he did literally bring it all in it. And I think it, it all connects well, too. I feel like Skyfall is the telling of one story. Yes. I don't feel it's six set pieces mm. with some loose connective tissue in between. Yes. And that's Absolutely. been kind of the guilty mm. of, you know, by choice of, of certain other films. Yeah. But this one doesn't. This is like an unfolding of a story that builds even, and you're absolutely right, the plot points, mm. the plot holes. Yeah. There are so many. It's like Swiss cheese. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing of like he had to time the bomb and all this other stuff, it's, it's ridiculous. But mm. it, it tells the story so well, and you're so wrapped up into yeah. it. Yeah. You do not see it yeah. until you sit yeah. here in a room elsewhere sure. and evaluate it. Yeah. And by the way, Silva as the bad guy to me. Mm. So good. And and it's all the reasons you said, and I'll add one other thing. 
the giddiness that he mm. has throughout this is not this weird, crazy, cackling laugh giddiness. Yeah. Like, you know, Cesar Romero's Joker. It is truly this like whole like your knees must be killing you and and oh why are you running and why all this running and yeah, yeah. you know oh i'm going to go get her he has this gleeful nature about him that is so authentic and true yes. and maniacal and madman like mm. that it makes him more dangerous yeah as opposed to funny like you're not laughing at what he's saying yeah yeah you're like oh god this guy is just creepy and dangerous yeah, yes and it's almost like like Ooh. why am i so captivated by this guy he's yeah. so creepy yet i can't look away yeah, no, that that's absolutely true, and so and, I, and I love what you said too about this being a very self-contained story. And I know that a lot of us have sort of like criticized had a love-hate relationship with the idea that it's only Craig's third outing, and yet the whole theme of this is whether or not he's too old oh, to be in the yes. field, and whether MI6 is irrelevant anymore. And the the brilliance of it, of course, is that like once you re you've seen it a couple times, you start to say to yourself. Well, first, first you're getting the theme of this all over the place. Like, right. you know, the, sometimes the old ways are the best, etc. But then you realize, like, I don't think they're just talking about James Bond and MI6. They're talking about the Bond phenomenon, the whole mm -hmm. James Bond franchise. And where does James Bond fit in the world of, of cinema and in the world of action movies, etc. Yeah, it's a bigger allegory. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, absolutely. And I think th when you start to see that level, you're all of a sudden like, wow, that was genius. Like, that was brilliant. And I and again, again, we can debate whether or not it was too soon to sort of do that with Craig's Craig's Bond. The overall the outcome works. Yeah, it, it, it all comes together and works spectacularly as a as a solid adventure. And I think it's connected well by the music. I think mm. the music in this film. I, I think it was an interesting choice. Yeah. I always have a preference to Arnold, but sure. you know, directors choose who they want to, to to work with, obviously. And I thought it was respectful. I do not. I'll be very frank with you. I don't put on this soundtrack in my car. I don't work out to it. I don't take walks to it. I mm. don't really revisit it, other than appreciating it. When we heard it in concert, it was yeah. amazing mm -hmm. to hear it like that. But what what did you think of the music? I I think the music is great, and honestly, um, you know, I. Again, I was a little disappointed that David Arnold didn't come back. Mm. A little more than a little disappointed. Yeah. Um, but once I heard the score, I thought, like now I really can't imagine Skyfall without it. You know, like like there sometimes I hear scores and I would love to hear, you know, a version if maybe somebody else mixed in Arnold music, etc. Yeah. Not this one. I I, I I really can't imagine it without with any other music. So what did you think of the score to Skyfall when you heard it in Spectre? No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's an old conversation. Oh, how you go on. <laughs> um, all right. So we, we well, you know, we're, we're led to this phase of um, I got to talk about the fashion aspects. Mm. This is one where it really, I mean, coming off of Quantum of Solace, which is probably easily Daniel Craig's best fashion plate as far as like things that Everybody can wear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was a pretty good one, too. And not mm. just this outfit, but you had the Billy Reed coat. You yeah. know, you had the track yeah. suit. You had all these different pieces. You had some of the Tom Ford suits. So mm. this was um, this was one where I think it was a, a fashion home run. Yeah, I, I would run. easily agree with that, yeah. I think, I mean, I just bought one myself, actually. Um, there you go. Love, the, love that shirt. I love, yeah, you're right, what he's wearing for the climax of, of the film at the, the house. The barber jacket. Yeah, I mean, yeah. great stuff. So. Absolutely. Absolutely love it. Yeah, now, is there a henchman in this film? I don't think so. Oh, that, that leads us to Bond girls. That sure what'd does. What would you think of the Bond girls? You mean M? She's great. Uh, well, I, I, you, you, <laughs> you obviously have Severine. Yeah. Who again? I feel like Severine is like uh, Lucia, you know, yeah. Luciana, Lucia, Lucia, Lu Lucia, I think. Lucia, yeah. Um, she was maybe underused. It was very quick. Yeah. Uh, she was fantastic in that bar scene. Oh mm. my gosh. Yeah. She can. She's beautiful, but she can act. Yes. Um, and then, would you consider Money Penny a Bond girl in this film? Because she is out in the field, dressing kind of glam, flirting with him, shaving. Hmm. Or is she just this whole separate entity of she's with the Scooby-Doo gang? Um, I would have to say she is... Yeah, I, I would say she's kind of a separate entity. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, again, you don't know she's Money Penny until the last minute. Um, however, yeah, she, she does sort of... I, I'll tell you this. I love what they did with her as Money Penny. Yes. Um, 
I love the fact that she sort of gets a more kind of a kick-ass backstory. The sort of the same way Craig's Bond did, mm -hmm. where he kind of went from a naval officer, now he's, at least we think, he's yeah. a former SAS. Um, so he's a little more badass. And I kind of feel like they did something similar with Money Penny, where she's not just a little, you know, nice, nice lady from the typing pool. She's mm -hmm. actually been in the field. Yeah. You know, not necessarily the best agent in the field, but held her own. Uh, her scene in the courtroom where, where he kicks her the gun, she starts firing. It's yeah. a great scene. Um, and I love, love, love that they left it very ambiguous. You don't know what they slept together. Exactly. Yes, that's true. And it's almost like this was kind of like Connery and Money Penny, where you sort of like, you, know, you, you kind of wonder, like, do they have a past? They seem very familiar. Is, yeah. you know, is there a little more to this? So I sort of feel like we did the same thing here. Right. You know, I, I think that was a brilliant touch. Yes, I, I do think that's good. Although, I don't think they did. I don't think so either, because she kind of does sort of refute his advances. I yeah. mean, I mean, she doesn't seem horrified. You know? No, no, no. Given a, but, given uh, a situation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I, I think they definitely left a good solid coulda maybe. Yeah. You know, who knows? And by the way, just before we move on, I, I do also think Bernice Marlowe as Severin is absolutely spectacular. And I think she, what I love about her, I mean, she just has this look. That to me is a Bond girl look. Yes. Where, I mean, she, it's not just that she's stunning, she's exotic. Has an air of mystery about her, like this, you know, almost haunting in a way. That shot of her across the street after he's had the fight with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That boy is that just just such a great she shot. Is. She's almost um, excuse the pun. She's like a specter. She's she's this ethereal kind yeah, of right. You know, smoky type. It's almost like thing. am I like is that a mirage? Am I really seeing yeah. her? Yeah. All right, that wasn't too creepy. Um, <laughs> we have an, we have a, a reintroduction uh -huh. of a fan favorite Q who gives this uh, wonderful Christmas gift. <laughs> Not exactly Christmas, Not actually. Exactly Christmas. Um, so what do you think of the new Q? I, I think the new Q is great. And I think, um, you know, as opposed to do... I mean, it was interesting. When we talked about Dying of the Day and I talked about John Cleese was probably probably the perfect successor to Desmond Llewellyn for right. a couple reasons. Although some of those reasons aren't exactly flattering because they sort of feel like... We we just we need we need a comedy actor because we're going to do comedy movies and right. et cetera et cetera. Um, the the change of pace to go with this younger Q I thought is pretty damn smart, mm. especially again and, and it could just be a sign of my age you know where I'm kind of calling my nephew saying like do you know how to use this Instagram thing, um, you know so I thought that was pretty clever you know that they they actually brought in like and I, and I love the conversation you know youth is no guarantee of innovation et cetera. So well done and a great actor. So that that dynamic is a lot of fun. I do. I, I thought it was great too. And I, I'll tell you what. I actually like Q Inspector. Like as much mm. as I I riddle Spectre with bullets sometimes, um, I do like his portrayal of Q in that. I think yeah. he's a solid character. That still he 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 maintains the same level of Q. Yeah. In both mm. movies, and that's a testimony to him. And I think yeah. maybe even how it was written. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I I think yeah that that the actor is spectacular. He's just so good at that role. He's 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 another one. You, you just you just enjoy his presence, and that was sort of the 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 mastery of Desmond Llewellyn. Yeah, you know, I just I like him when he's around. I mean, when as soon as he comes on screen, you light up, and there's Q. You know, and I I think this one's doing the same thing. And speaking of Q, we got to talk about the childlike uh, aspects of gadgets and props. So there yeah, were a few. Yeah. There was the radio. There was the gun yeah. with the fingerprint thing. And yeah. also, let's face it, the DB5 is back, yeah. and it's tricked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what did you think of all those? Um, well, I thought. Uh, well, let's see. I'll let me. I'll hit all three. I thought right. the radio was odd. It was. It was a very clunky attempt to say, "Look, we're going old school." Right. I get it. Okay, I get that. But but seriously, I mean, this thing's got an antenna on it. I, I haven't had a cell phone with an antenna since right. I don't know, I don't know when. Um, you know, and this I is mean, after you have smart chips and things like that, and right? I mean, we literally just had right. Scenario, you got shot you in got the arm with it's right. Like, so so why we're gonna? I mean, and, and again, this is you don't think the bad guy would find like it, it, I, I assume Bond is not gonna get searched and we can yeah. So, anyway, so there's it, it was, I, I get it was the a point gag, of it. It was a gag prop. Yeah, it was right. the throwaway line. It, it, right, it, and it was meant to sort of be part of the whole, sometimes the old ways are the best theme. Right. But it was a little, again, a little awkward. Um, the gun, I, I, 
okay, okay. I, I put it this way. I picked on it in License to Kill because I'm like, in case the ninjas come and grab your gun because they can't get a gun. And I, so I, I had to sort of give this the same treatment because I said, okay, so you had to have a scene written in where the, the, the bad guy picks up the gun and just goes to shoot Bond right in the face. Well, you mean to tell me these guys don't have their own guns? Like, if the guy wanted to just shoot Bond in front of the whole b casino, he could have done so. You know, we're in total alignment today because I have to tell you, I thought the gun was ridiculous. Yeah. It, it's a cool thing, and there's a lot of setup, and mm. he even looks at it and gives it a regard, and they had to mm. paint, you know, a, a, a hand over the glove because they made an yes, issue, yes. A, a thing, you know, an issue with it. Yes. But, all right, so there must be this big payoff that's coming. It's like, you know, some of the other films where we're like, Oh, Renard is so strong. There's yeah. going to be this big superhero fight. Right. Literally, that's it. This this bodyguard, this this <laughs> yeah, bouncer yeah. can't right. fire at Bond, and then he gets eaten by a Komodo dragon. That's your big payoff <laughs> for that gun. Yeah. Oh no. It, yeah. Right. It's just, it really kind of lacking, and I kind of just almost confusing why they even bothered. But um, but the other big gadget, and again, <laughs> mm, love hate relationship with it is the trick that DB5. Yeah. And of course, I mean the bottom line is we can we can hem and haw about continuity all we want. The, the reality is that when we saw that in the theater, we all had a bondgasm and just kind of went crazy because yeah. we were just like, "Holy shit, there, you know, this yeah. my language. <laughs> oh my god, there the the, the the DB5 is shooting, you know, machine guns out the So we just went crazy. Um but then I do say to myself, couldn't you have done that some way and kept the continuity? Because they literally, I mean, it would not have taken much to kind of just fit that into the world of Daniel Craig. He yeah. won that car in a game in the Bahamas. Yeah. It's his car. Yeah. I mean, so why not just figure out, I mean, all you got to do is put the steering wheel on that side. And you could have just said, yes, I got the car. It was a regular old car. Q tricked it out. Right. You know, but they decided just to kind of. Just throw caution to the wind and said, "Yes, it's the Goldfinger car, and that's it." So. Yeah, that that was. I mean, it was an amazing moment. Mm. It really felt like fan service. Yeah, I mean, it just it was like, all right, this is where the theater is going to explode. Watch this, guys. Yeah, and it's like, let's see how we can mm -hmm. you know trigger yeah. the, the fans. And yeah. and they were right. I mean, look, they know us, um, so I don't hold it against them. But my biggest issue is when I kept seeing it come back. You know, yeah, even yeah. the frame of it, and at the end of Spectre, and then even with No Time to Die, the trailer, yeah. I'm, I'm almost having, and a lot of people have talked about this, this is nothing new, I'm almost having an, an overdose, so it's neutralizing yeah. the DB5. Yes. It's like, are there yeah. no other vehicles out there? Yeah, no, and, and you're not alone. I think a lot of people are kind of like going like, all right, I get it. I, I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, again, it's, it's so funny how this car appeared in two Connery movies, right? It yeah. appeared in Goldfinger, and it does a cameo in Thunderball, and yet it's been seen multiple times as kind of fan service tribute to mm -hmm. the older films. We've seen it far more in the Brosnan Craig era yeah. than we ever did in the Connery era. So it is it's, it is kind of like, all right, guys, we get it. Um, and incidentally, too, it's funny because, and, and I, I, I still have, I don't know if I'm committed to this theory, hmm. but I am sort of wondering if, if uh, part of, and is this spoilerish? No, I mean, I'm just, I am just grabbing the straws. I don't know anything. God. But always, the Kroll Craig course. tenure to me, like I've sort of suspected, because the, does the whole thing end up being kind of a prequel to to the original series? Like, the, is this whole thing, like by the time mm -hmm. Skyfall concludes, you feel like, well, actually, let me say it this way: at the end of Casino, it was like, all right, that's the origin of James Bond. After this, we're gonna get a regular adventure, and eh, that's so a fast Quantum, little more of the. Okay, then by the end of Skyfall, we're in M's office. We've got a Q. We've got a Money Penny. Now we're good. Now, now we've seen the origin of Bond. Now we're gonna get no a little more. So basically, I say to myself, is the whole Craig tenure gonna sort of work as this overall prequel leading into you know after this he's James Bond, even though we'll never see it in, in the Craig era. So with that said, long-winded way of, of making making my point, why not try to make the DB5 seem like it was the same one from Casino Royale, right. just tricked out, because that would have lent to this origin theory, which, again, which they keep trying to sort of sell yeah. us on. Well, clearly, the DB5 meets its maker in, and I don't think this is a spoiler, you've seen the trailer, mm. but it gets riddled, and then he's in other Aston Martins throughout the whole thing. 
True. Yeah, but we but we, but we saw it explode in Skyfall. Yet oh, yet true. it shows that's up true. again. Yeah. So I kind of feel like it's nothing fun, is off David. the yeah nothing is off the table at this point. That's true. All right. Overall, overall, mm. we've got to ask this question: Are we four for four? Did Skyfall? Does Skyfall hold up against the theory of being the third movie being a solid Bond outing? I, I think it definitely holds up in terms of being a solid outing, and in many ways, uh, Craig kind of hitting his stride. Mm. Um, having said that, I think everyone knows what I'm about to say, that Casino Royale was a very tough act to follow, ah, and no matter okay. how good Skyfall is, it's extremely hard to try to outdo Casino. I mean, I kind of feel like Sky Casino, to me, is still far and away... Uh, Craig's best. Yeah. Um, but with that said, I mean, Skyfall serves as, a, as an incredible successor. And I've, I've had people say to me, like, like, what if it was Casino Royale and then Skyfall mm. without Quantum? You know, and I and I kind of like, like, what if Casino? What if what if Skyfall was the second Bond film? What would you? You know, and I that would be pretty interesting. And I kind of wonder how I would feel about it because I sort of feel like again. You know, even though we've kind of, I think Quantum has sort of grown on us more right. in recent years. At the time, I kind of felt like, you know, it, it definitely what didn't hold up uh, too strongly to Casino, and then Skyfall was sort of a rebound. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of wonder, like, would I feel that Skyfall was was kind of on par with Casino? What if it was Casino, then Spectre, and then Skyfall? Oof. Wow. Uh... <laughs> Because um, because Skyfall to me almost seems like a last Craig film, you know they're talking about age, yeah. aging out, you know his M dies, all mm. this other stuff, yeah. and they kind of end it in a nebulous way that it's a nice cliffhanger to nothingless, potentially. Mm. But Spectre, you know, he's kind of on this mission. He's not supposed to be on this mission. He's still going rogue. Yeah. Uh, that's an interesting theory. I'm not sure. I I almost feel like. You know, and again, we, I think you and I have sort of had a back and forth over the years about which one, you know, is Quantum or Spectre the worst. Oh, no, it's easy for me. I, I think at one point, I would have, at one point, I would have said Quantum was worse than Spectre, because even though Spectre fails at so many levels, Quantum, I, I, I'll tell you what, if you took the scene out of Mathis get, getting put in the dumpster, um, then I could, <laughs> that, that, that one that. scene, oh boy, does that sit wrong with me. Um, but you know that one. It's almost like it, it, there was something about Quantum, and to its credit, it wants to be challenging to its audience. But there were mm. so many times when it was like, like Here, this ain't your daddy's James Bond kind of stuff. I'm like, I already mm. got it. Um, Spectre to me is just a failure. Like it just, it just, <laughs> just, just kind of the wheels come off the car and that's it. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, so so had Spectre been the second one and then Skyfall? I don't know. That would have been, Spectre would have been a tough it, one it to It would have definitely made Skyfall look better, even better than it does. Oh, sure, absolutely, yeah. Because then you'd be like, oh, that cracker in the desert is delicious. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It, it's Right, it's almost, it's like, 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 you, like, like you talk about the, the, the up and down of the graph, it's almost like you got Casino and just, and he just jumps off, hits the... <laughs> I, I will have to say, I think Skyfall is, is, is very solid. Mm. I always enjoy watching it. Um, I think that, when we look back with all five movies, and I haven't seen anything that anybody else hasn't seen with No Time to Die, I don't know the plot details for sure or anything, but I, I will say that I, I do believe Skyfall will still remain the second best Craig film. Mm. Um, no Time to Die will have to really hit it out of the park mm. and yeah. be just a great story, a great portrayal by Daniel Craig, well acted, all the ancillary characters, mm. and Rami Malek is going to have to bring it. I mean, and, and I know yeah. he's got the ability, but they've got to write it really well yeah. for it to beat Skyfall. Right, I don't right. think it has a... This is so terrible to say. I don't think it has a prayer to beat Casino, because I think mm. Casino is lightning in a bottle. Yeah. yeah. I really do. Yes. And that's okay. Mm. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. In fact, I've had people ask me, you know, like, like what's your prediction for No Time to Die? You know, like, and I... And I, and I think my my feeling is that it probably will be on par with Skyfall. And I feel like just and and, and great. it's and it's yeah and it's and I'm kind of spitballing because I'm only going on what I've seen in the trailers, mm -hmm. etc. 
Um, but usually the trailers are, to me, I find are fairly good indications. I, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of times where you can watch a trailer and you know it's going to be good or you know it's not going to be good. And I kind of feel like they seem to be hitting it, hitting all the right marks. You know this is going to be an emotional film and you know mm -hmm. visually it's it's going to be very pleasing. I think everything I've seen in the trailer is good looking. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's possible it'll, it'll be on par with Skyfall. So I think that kind of, you know, again, that kind of up and down graph is going to be consistent. If I had to take a guess. Nice. All right. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we got through all four. And it, it, this this one held water, I think, better than any of the other theories. Yeah, I think so, too. Some of them were perfect. Well, I, th I think were. the second one being, uh, or rather, yeah, the second series we did about the last one being the worst, that was a little too <laughs> uncomfortably consistent. But uh, no, I think this one, too. Really I think foolproof. I, yeah, I, I think, again, the theory that just, again, the, the films really do sort of, sort of come into their own and the actor gets comfortable, et cetera, I think that worked. Yeah. So, in the next series, we'll be exploring the second film of. I think we should. I honestly. Well, what's our theory? Well, I'll tell you what. Here's a theory. Right. Here's here's a theory. I because I I you know I've often called the second Bond film a sophomore film, hmm. where you know they they came out strong with the first one and then well what do we do with the second one? They kind of don't know where to go and well what do we do next and everything and. So, Sometimes I kind of feel like they're on wobbly ground. Yeah. Um, definitely not always, but I think there's enough cases where that's true. So I'm, I'll am i pitch it right now. I think the second one is often not so good. All right. So not the horror show that the last one is. Mm. Certainly not the best. Yeah. And not on a solid footing that the third one. Yeah. But a, a weaker sister. Yes. Sorry, kind of like the, kind of the, the Jan Brady, right? It's the, it's the, middle, the middle child of... Marsha, of, Marsha, uh, Marsha. Yeah. The middle child of the first three is often again. Jane I'll just say I'll just say wobbly is my uh, my word for it. All right, so we're gonna call that the George Glass theory. There you go, George Glass <laughs> after Jan <laughs> and her made up boyfriend. It's All the right. new Jan Brady. So we'll we'll explore that one. Stay tuned for that. That'll be coming in 2025. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. This has been David Zaritsky and Joe Darlington. We'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye.